Every kid wants to be an astronaut, but some people really do reach for the stars. So what do they do when they get there? Do they still drink Tang? Here's what a typical day on the International Space Station is like. Astronauts might be used to following a schedule here on Earth, but it's nothing compared to the one that they face once they arrive at the ISS. For the entirety of their space-based mission, virtually everything they do is scheduled. In fact, each astronaut's day is planned out in five-minute increments, and it's not even the astronauts who get to make up that schedule. I'm a special team at NASA. It's a tough job since they have to take so many variables into account. Once the astronaut has their schedule, which includes when they eat, sleep, work, and exercise, they have to stick to it. And if they aren't hungry when it's time to eat, too bad, they need the calories. If they can't sleep during the allotted time, well, they're allowed to read a book. The astronauts also can't make up for that missed sleep with a nap the next day. But what is a day in space even like? After all, our idea of a 24-hour period of light and dark is based on our experience here on Earth. The length of a day is different on all planets in the solar system. When you're orbiting above one, the whole concept goes out the window. According to the European Space Agency, a day on the ISS is based around what the astronauts' bodies want, not any rising or setting of the sun. Those on board experience over a dozen sunrises every 24 hours, but the astronauts are still inhabiting bodies that spent many years on Earth and are finally tuned to the 24-hour Earth day. That means the ISS runs on biological time. The swings between light and dark every 45 minutes do mess with that circadian rhythm, though, so the artificial lights on the ISS come in different intensities to try to help mimic the day-to-night cycle on Earth. The ISS astronauts all wake up to an alarm, because even they can't escape the daily grind. Floating through the cabin, they put on disposable clothes, which last them three days. And since laundry isn't a thing on the ISS, once those clothes are soiled, they become garbage. Thankfully for their dental health, they can still brush their teeth, and the process does involve water. But without gravity, the small dollop sticks to the bristles of the brush, and once they're finished brushing, they can't spit. That means swallowing the toothpaste every time, but it's not as gross as you might think. It's edible, won't kill you. Showering is completely out of the question, so bathing is done with damp towels and dry shampoo. Oddly enough, while there's no rule that they have to, many male astronauts still shave on the ISS, even though it involves a lot more work than on Earth. Since they don't want a random piece of stubble or shaving cream to float off into the space station and possibly cause damage, they've got to take precautions. If they use an electric razor, it needs to be next to a fan that's reversed to suck the hair up. Sure, the process might be more complicated than on Earth, but astronaut Chris Hadfield was able to maintain a fabulous mustache during his time on the ISS, so it's obviously worth the effort. Do you want a piece or not? Yes, I would love oh, a okay. piece. Hmm, thank you. It's very good. Hmm. This is what they eat up there. You probably think of astronaut food as the freeze-dried ice cream you had as a kid. Well, that's not quite what they use anymore. These days, the food they eat is apparently much tastier and has far more variety. Like with everything else on board, the goal is to eat food in such a way as no crumbs will float off and possibly cause havoc. This means sipping soup out of a pouch with a straw and being extra careful when eating more solid foods. NASA explains that astronauts use water to rehydrate pasta and even have access to desserts like brownies. Salt and pepper are available in liquid form and they need a lot of it, as well as other spices, since the astronauts' sense of taste gets worse the longer they're in space. Speaking of liquid form, you remember Tang? If you're wondering, do astronauts still drink Tang? Believe it or not, the answer is yes. They call it orange-flavored drink today, but that's just so Tang won't profit off the publicity like they did in the 70s. While they might have found ways around showering, even on the ISS, astronauts still have to answer the call of nature. And going to the bathroom in zero gravity is an ordeal. But as the European Space Agency explains, it is a luxury earlier astronauts could only dream of, as before the space toilet, there were bags. Yeah. They pooped in bags. The ESA does admit that the toilet on the ISS looks intimidating and that even highly trained astronauts can find the thing difficult to use. First, they need to grab a funnel. Since there's no gravity to hold them down, the astronauts use restraining bars. And of course, microgravity means the toilet doesn't use water. Instead, it uses a strong suction fan, essentially a vacuum cleaner, which moves whatever was left in the toilet to a wastewater container. It does this continually, unlike, say, an airplane toilet. And of course, you do have your privacy. There's a little door. While it seems like just existing in space is a job in itself, the astronauts are, after all, there to work. No matter what their other jobs are, every astronaut will spend part of their day working on experiments. 
In a space station where room is extremely limited, there are a whopping five different research laboratories. The astronauts themselves aren't coming up with the experiments, though. Instead, they're told before they head up to the ISS what they'll be working on and practice before they go. Weirdly enough, one of the most important science experiments the astronauts take part in is actually just living in space. Their bodies are effectively their own very personal experiments, and researchers back on Earth are eager to find out what such a small amount of gravity does to a body. So the astronauts are part of medical experiments while they're up there, but it's not just humans that are studied. Experiments on the ISS have included animals as well, from ants to fish to mice. While there is a lot to learn about the effects of microgravity on the human body, one thing we do know is that if the astronauts don't do a lot of exercise in space, their muscles will atrophy and their bones will weaken. This means each astronaut has to work out a lot. Those on the ISS are required to exercise at least two hours a day. And while the equipment might look relatively similar to what you'll find in a gym, in order to correctly use and get the benefits from exercise, there have to be some adjustments. On the treadmill, for example, astronauts have to strap themselves in or they'll float away. Their exercise bike doesn't have a seat since sitting on one is impossible with so little gravity. Weights in particular are an issue, since while they still have mass in space, they have virtually no weight. The advanced resistive exercise device uses vacuum tubes to recreate the feeling and benefit of weightlifting. The astronauts on the ISS are constantly talking to Earth. While this obviously includes NASA officials and mission control, it could also, in theory, include you. According to Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, or ARIS, the astronauts have their own ham radio on the ISS, which they can use to contact anyone with their own ham radio on Earth. Welcome to the International Space Station. My name is Isabella. I'm eight years old. This happens a lot more often than you'd think although they are much more likely to reach out in the morning or in the evening. Chatting to randos with outdated technology isn't exactly their top priority, but if you have a ham radio, you don't have to wait for them to contact you. You can try to reach out to the ISS yourself. I was thinking, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm talking to someone out of the Earth's atmosphere. Since it's so complicated and expensive to send an astronaut to the ISS, you might think NASA tries to wring every last working minute out of them while they're in space. But not only do astronauts have free time scheduled every day, they even get weekends off. According to NASA, there's a practical reason for this. Life on the ISS is so stressful that free time to relax in whatever ways the astronauts need is vital to keep them mentally and emotionally fit. They are even allowed to bring some items of their choosing to the ISS to relax with. Books are a popular choice. Chris Hatfield became famous for bringing his guitar and making a music video while he was up there. Other common ways to spend their free time include watching movies, using social media, playing cards, talking in the old ham radio, obviously, and emailing their loved ones. But often, they choose to spend their precious free time simply looking out the windows at Earth, an experience they know they won't be able to recreate after their time on the ISS. And for some, the view never gets old. The view was overwhelming. When you're in space with just a handful of colleagues, emergencies of any kind take on a new level of urgency. The things that can go seriously wrong while orbiting Earth range from medical to mechanical, and the astronauts have to be prepared for anything. While thankfully, emergencies aren't a daily occurrence, anything is possible. Every astronaut on board gets at least some basic training in emergency medicine, including resuscitation procedures for if another crew member experiences a heart attack. But only one of the astronauts, the crew medical officer, gets more advanced training on saving lives in space. That astronaut is in charge of knowing how to use all the medical supplies on board, including the medications. In a mechanical emergency, it's not just one astronaut in danger, but everyone on the ISS. As recently as 2021, NASA's mission control made the unnerving discovery that the ISS was slightly out of its expected orbit. The astronauts were informed, and both the US and Russia worked to fix the issue. The situation was so serious that those on the ISS lost contact with Earth for minutes at a time as they tried to fix the problem. An astronaut schedule allows for eight hours of sleep a night, but actually getting a good night's sleep in space can be extremely complicated. For one, the astronauts have to literally tie themselves down. While occasionally someone will think floating free during the nights would be cool, they usually give up on it when they wake up stuck to an air filter. So nights are passed tethered in a sleeping bag in each crew member's small cabin. If they do choose to tie their bed down elsewhere, it's important they get good airflow. Because of the microgravity, an astronaut can actually start to asphyxiate on their own exhaled carbon dioxide if it isn't blown away. But as you can see, 
We have bungee cords that help hold us up against the wall. Other things that make sleep more difficult are the noise of the ISS itself, which is never quiet. And then there's the noise of the other astronauts, since space doesn't stop people from snoring. Some astronauts feel motion sick while trying to sleep, and getting up to pee in the middle of the night isn't exactly easy. And there's the fact that the sun keeps rising and setting during those eight hours, meaning an eye mask can be vital. Once they do get to sleep, however, many astronauts report dreaming they are weightless, which makes sense since they are. And after waking up, they start the whole day again, same as it was before, all laid out for them to drink tang, poop in a vacuum, and run experiments all day long. 